Hello, for today's video lecture we're going to be talking about the cross product. So the cross product is a vector operation that can be performed on any two three-dimensional vectors. So if you've got 2D vectors we can make them into 3D by simply including uh, zeros for the Z components. Alright, so the result of a cross product operation is a vector quantity. Unlike the dot product which gives you a scalar, here we're going to have a vector uh, as the output. Uh, and the, the cross product is particularly useful uh, in engineering for moment calculations in 3D uh, as well as angular velocity and angular acceleration calculations in 3D. Alright, so say we've got our two input vectors A and B. Uh, the cross product of A cross B uh, is going to be a vector. It's going to be perpendicular to the original vectors. Uh, so whatever C is going to be perpendicular to both A and B. Uh, and the magnitude is going to be equal to the magnitude of the first vector uh, times the magnitude of the second vector times the sine of the angle between them. So C, uh, the C vector is A cross B um, and the magnitude of C is magnitude of A times magnitude of B times the sine of theta uh, and the direction like I said is perpendicular to both. Uh, so there's actually two different directions. C could be going straight down as well and that would also be perpendicular to both of these. Um, so to figure out the direction we're going to use something called the right hand rule. Uh, so over here we've got an illustration of a hand. Uh, make sure you're using your right hand for this. It doesn't, it's going to give you the opposite result if you use your left hand. Uh, you're going to take your index finger, point it straight out in the direction of your first vector. So in this case we've got A. Uh, you're going to bend your uh, middle finger in in the direction of B and now look at stick your thumb straight up uh, and look in the direction of your thumb. So your thumb is going to be pointing in the direction of C. Um, if we did the opposite, so if we had B cross A, uh, basically your hand would flip over uh, and your thumb would be pointing in the opposite direction. So this right hand rule is going to figure out which of the two perpendicular directions uh, the vector, the cross product vector is actually going in. All right, so to calculate the cross product uh, with components, uh, we're going to use a different form. So if we don't have uh, this theta angle between them, uh, if we've got the vectors in component form, we've got another way of calculating the cross product. Uh, so we're going to write out x, y, and z in a row, uh, followed by x, y, z in components, um, and uh, all of that. So you're going to repeat the uh, x and y components afterwards. So you're going to wind up with something like this. So write out x, y, z, x, y, uh, and then here we're doing r cross f. Uh, so this is a moment calculation, so the r vector and the f vector we're doing r cross f. So I'm going to write, write out the x component of r, y component of r, z component of r, x component of r, y component of r. Same thing with the force vector. So x component of force, y component of force, z component of force, x component of force, Y component. So I'm lining up X, Y, and Z components in columns like this. All right, so this setup is to help you remember a formula. Uh, so here is our vector, uh, and the cross product uh, of the two vectors will give us a third vector. So we're going to have uh, three components of the cross product. And to find those three components, we do the following. So X, I would take this diagonal through x, so ry times fz minus this other diagonal that goes through x, so minus rz times fy. So ry times fz minus rz times fy. For the y component, I would do the same thing except through the y's. So here it's going to be rz times fx, rz times fx, minus uh, rx times fz. So Rx times Fz. And for Z we go the diagonals uh, through that. So blue is always going kind of down to the right. Red is always going down to the left. Uh, so if you want to memorize these directly that's fine as well. Uh, I find this little drawing up here helps me remember the formulas. Um, so you'll notice, uh, so the result, this moment is the result. Um, it's Y and Z in the, Y and Z components in the X result, z and x in the y result, and then x and y in the z result. So we have uh, always kind of the other components are what we are going to uh, be putting into those formulas. 
All right, so that would be the three components is the X, Y, and Z components of our cross product. In this case, it was a moment calculation. Um, so um, that's our end result. So the advantage of using cross product for moment calculations really comes out when we use computer tools. So we can do that by hand, uh, but a computer can do that much faster than we can. Uh, so we can calculate cross products in MATLAB. Uh, we can calculate uh, cross products with online tools such as Wolfram Alpha. Um, and uh, when we do that, we're going to save ourselves some time, particularly if we're working with complex uh, 3D problems where we have the components, we just need to do the cross product quickly. All right, so that's all we have for today's video lecture. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again.